All right. So I have stopped sharing the screen because there are no slides for this. So you will get to see the presenters faces large and in charge. So greetings. Welcome to help your patrons discover more with Evergreen and Aspen. I am Carol Witt from CW Mars and I'm the moderator for this session. And a few housekeeping notes before we begin. Uh, please note that this session is being recorded and I will be adding a link to the captioning in the chat as soon as I'm finished this introduction. And I will be monitoring the chat for questions and comments, uh, both in Zoom and in feed loop. And uh, they think that it's best to uh, save questions for the end because there's going to be a lot of discussion going on in this panel. I would like to thank all of our sponsors, including those at the champion level, Equinox for sponsoring the platform, ECDI for sponsoring the captions, and Kipu for sponsoring tomorrow's Hackfest. And now I'd like to introduce our many speakers. And <laughs> we have Sierra Chastain Ritu from CW Mars, Jordan Fields from Bywater Solutions, and they're the ones who uh, do Aspen, uh, Inga Kokidu. I, I'm sorry if I've completely mangled your name, uh, and Elizabeth Hager from Porter County Public Library System in Indiana, Linda Kramer from Martin Luther College in Minnesota, and Lindsay Stratton and Allison Pryor from Westchester Library System in New York. So take it away. Thanks so much, Carol. Uh, I also want to say thank you to Ruth and Rogan for their presentation yesterday afternoon. It was an excellent introduction to Aspen Discovery. Uh, as Carol said, we have lots of folks here. Don't worry, they're not all going to answer every question. We did organize ourselves around that. Um, but it would be best to save probably questions until the end. We will try to leave some time there in case we answer your question as you're going. Uh, but we wanted to start with a little bit more of an introduction for everyone, um, who they are, what library or consortium they're from, um, how long they've been working with Aspen and what got them inter interested in Aspen discovery. So I'll start. My name is Jordan Fields. I'm the head of Aspen for Bywater Solutions. I have been working with Aspen and it's, let's say, parents and grandparents since 2012. Uh, I started just working in a library in um, rural Colorado, and then went to Garfield County Public Library, and then went to the Marmot Library Network, which is a Sierra consortium in Western Colorado. And that's where Aspen grew out of was a Sierra consortium. Uh, my, what got me interested in Aspen Discovery was actually record grouping. You'll probably hear more about that today. It's all the different formats grouped into one record, your eBooks, audiobooks, all of that. Uh, and that was something that I worked on a committee on to develop that for the first time. And it's that features 10 year anniversary. It was first launched in 2014. So I will go ahead and pass it off to Sierra to introduce herself. All right, thank you, Jordan. Um, I'm Sierra. I am uh, obviously from CW Mars. I am the web support specialist at the network, um, which is our term for the Aspen person at the network. Um, we'll talk more about like what exactly I think that means with regards to Aspen, but just know that I am the Aspen person at CW Mars, um, and we're a consortium of currently 161 libraries of both public and academic. Um, we also have a school and a, the State Library of Massachusetts as well. So we kind of have all different kinds of libraries within our network. Thanks, Sierra. Uh, next, let's hear from Inga and Elizabeth. Hi, I'm Elizabeth. Um, Inga and I are actually sitting under each other's names, um, if you're looking at the, <laughs> the names at the bottom. Um, but I'm Elizabeth. I'm the collections coordinator for Porter County. Um, I also do a lot of the ticketing, so I take uh, anything when there's upgrades or anything we need help with. I'm the one who they go to um, for our staff. Uh, Inga's going to tell you more about why we joined, so I'll let her, <laughs> her take that part. <laughs> Uh, just to echo what Jordan said, the record grouping was a huge reason, um, but also when we joined, we actually were also on a Sierra library, and um, 
we knew that we were going to migrate to our state's Evergreen Consortium, which is Evergreen, Indiana, uh, which is, I think, I'm not exactly sure how many in the ballpark, about 125 libraries. But we didn't want to do a rapid fire change to a bunch of different discovery layers. So we decided to actually migrate to Aspen while we were still on Sierra. And then when we migrated to Evergreen, we were able to maintain that discovery layer. Um, so yeah, and uh, I'm, a, I'm an assistant director here, but I've previously been in an IT role as well as a similar role to Elizabeth. Thanks, uh, Linda. Hi, I'm Linda Cromer. I'm from Martin Luther College in New Ulm, Minnesota. Uh, we're a small academic library, the only academic library in a consortium of, with 38 public libraries. So we're kind of the odd duck in our consortium. We migrated from Sierra uh, to Evergreen and Aspen together uh, just over a year ago. So we've been learning, uh, learning the ropes, uh, kind of jumped in with both feet. And uh, the grouped works really impressed me when I first started looking at Aspen and also the customization and the possibility of kind of making it an all-in-one stop for our library patrons. Thanks. Uh, and Lindsay and Allison. Um, hi, I'm Allison Pryor. I'm with the Westchester Library System. And we, uh, in March, came up on our fifth year of using Evergreen. And at the end of this month, we're coming up on our one year anniversary of using Aspen. Um, and one of the main decision, one of the main reasons why we decided to go with Aspen was it fully integrated our e-resources into our search results for our patrons. And that had been a huge wish list item for a couple of years. And also just the level of customization that each instance for our 38 libraries, they could showcase their own branding and it allowed them to market their own unique collections. And it just made a lot of sense for us. And I'll hop in and add that we had been using a heavily customized version of the Evergreen T-Pack, uh, which was or has been replaced by the Bootstrap OPAC. Um, so we would have been facing a big change for our patrons no matter what we did. Um, so that was really an opportunity to, you know, look at what our, op you know, our options were to kind of meet some of those other goals that uh, Allison addressed. Thank you so much. Uh, so I'll be moderating. Uh, our first official question is, what feedback have you gotten from uh, patrons about Aspen? And then tell us also the same kind of thing, what about staff and power users? And we will start with uh, Westchester folks. So when we first went live with our instance of Aspen, we had linked a feedback form for our patrons and staff to fill out just to let us know what they thought about it. And um, anytime that you open up feedback to the public, you're going to get a lot of varied responses. Um, and a lot of the negative feedback we had gotten was the frustration of having to learn something new. Uh, for almost five years, our patrons had gotten used to using the Evergreen patron catalog. And then they had to, and that migration was, you know, a hole in itself. And so them having to learn something completely different looking than what they had gotten used to um, came, came through in those responses. Um, but we did also got a lot of overwhelming positive feedback too, uh, how easy it was for patrons to navigate once they were able to figure out what they were doing. And our staff feedback was also really positive. They loved that, uh, again, our e-resources were fully integrated with our search results. Things were easy to find. Um, once uh, because they're geared towards patrons um and so it was pretty mixed i don't necessarily recommend linking feedback forms to your uh top menu in aspen unless you are ready to just um filter out a lot of a lot of comments from the public but it was really interesting and helpful in knowing the things that we needed to tweak as far as um for like accessibility features and so on Anything to add to that, Lindsay, or are you good? All right, uh, how about Sierra? Yeah, so we uh, just launched our, for our public libraries uh, in March. So we've been live for almost two months, like a month and, and change. Um, and we, 
did not uh, put any like public feedback form or anything like that. Um, we have a network policy where we don't really interact with patrons directly. Um, so all of that feedback kind of goes from the patron to the library to us. Um, we did have a uh, network wide like feedback session um, with our library directors and coordinators um, and basically it was very fairly positive. Um, I, we had notes uh, from our libraries that they were getting unprompted positive feedback from their patrons. Um, they did, I do want to echo what Allison had said, there was some grumbling from those like less tech savvy patrons as well as the power users who were kind of frustrated about having to learn something new. Um, in our case, and I know I have colleagues in here who can correct me if I'm wrong, um, but we launched Evergreen in 2012 and I believe have been using the Evergreen OPAC you know, that whole time. So those power users have had a very long time to figure out exactly how they want to use the catalog and how they need to, you know, do the searches to find what they want. Um, so there was some grumbling about, you know, just change. Um, but overall, the feedback has been very positive and we had several libraries report um, that their patrons didn't say anything. And I'm very much on the train that no news is good news. They just kind of started using the catalog. Um, some some libraries were questioning if their patrons were using the catalog because no one said anything. Um, I do also work circulation at one of our libraries on the weekends and some of my, you know, more vocal patrons didn't say anything when I was expecting them to say something after we did that transition. Um, so I think overall it was very positive, but it definitely, the feedback that we did get was related to, you know, having to change um, the way that they search for content and, and a change in how advanced search works from Aspen to the Evergreen OPAC. Thanks so much. Anyone else have more comments on that one before we move on to the next one? All right. Uh, so what integrations are you using with Aspen? Things like e-content, events, archives, databases. Um, and then do you load in, do you side load any content? We learned what side loading was yesterday. And how do you manage your integrations? And uh, well, let's start with Linda with this one. This is the fun one for me. Um, we have API integrations with OverDrive, EBSCO Discovery Service, and StackMap for helping patrons find things in the library. We have side loads with Cambridge, EBSCO eBooks, Gale, Infobase, Oxford, Salem, and eBooks Minnesota. And then we are also uh, working to make the Aspen instance become our library's website as well. And management, it, it's not difficult. I'm, I'm doing it. I'm, I'm not a, a tech background person. I dabble and I enjoy working with Aspen in the background, but it's easy enough to figure out that I can just manage and, and make it look and feel and act how we need it to do. Uh, thanks, Linda. Uh, Lindsay. We um, <clears throat> so we have some things that are integrated system wide. Um, so that's uh, OverDrive, Hoopla, Canopy, Comics Plus. I think those are the the big ones. Um, we also because even though we're a consortia, each of our individual libraries have um, their own instances. So we also have set up some integrations for a few specific libraries, including, um, I think maybe at this point, one or two types of calendar and um, some uh, uh, cloud library and some Peterson's collections. Um, so generally, I'm the one who manages the side loads, um, but the rest, you know, uh, so cloud library and canopy, oh, and LinkedIn learning which was very exciting. That gets a lot of use, oddly. Um, but uh, yeah, so I currently manage those side loads. Uh, the other ones are all API. And um, I do want to put in a plug right here for the integrated um, analytics for um, the side loads and the other um, integrated services. So it will actually let you know who's accessing those um, resources from Aspen, which is awesome. 
Thanks so much, Lindsay. Uh, Sierra. Yeah. Um, so we, because we have so many different libraries on Aspen, we kind of have a little bit of everything. Um, we have a consortial overdrive account uh, collection that is applied to all of our libraries. Um, we have a number of libraries that also have overdrive advantage accounts that are also incorporated with their individual catalogs. Um, and we also, all of our libraries have their own individual catalogs. Um, so we have all of that. Um, some of our libraries have Hoopla, and so that is integrated if they wanted to integrate Hoopla. We did have some Hoopla subscribing libraries decide not to include Hoopla in their Aspen catalog. Um, we also have a couple libraries um, doing events integration, I think, with LibCal and then Library Calendar. Um, I know they're two different products. I don't remember which vendor goes to which one, but <laughs> um, we also have uh, open archives integration. Um, so there is a, like, a, I think it's a state thing. It's the Digital Commonwealth Archive. Um, and so we added that for all of our libraries and I'm working with uh, one of our academic libraries to incorporate some of their open archive collections as well. Um, so we have that a possibility to integrate that, which I think is really fun. Um, those results will kind of show up within search results as well um, to kind of, you know, increase the archive use and, and promotion of that. Um, and we do also have um, those web resources databases incorporated. Um, there's a fun uh, web page to kind of, uh, that comes with Aspen that can highlight your various resources and things like that, that we've used to highlight like our statewide databases and things like that. Um, and then we do have some library sideloading, um, but we are doing it for them at this time. I wanna like add an asterisk to it because um, we aren't, always planning on sideloading it for libraries we do want to eventually hand that off so that they are handling the maintenance of the side loads um, but we have several libraries um, adding things like canopy um, i think one of our libraries added odilo we have creative bug um, honestly carol could talk more about that because the cat center and carol are the folks who are handling that um, for us and so um, that is just kind of yeah see there she put it in the chat so we have a few different uh vendors that our libraries have decided to sideload um and yeah so we're kind of doing it all it just kind of depends on what the library has and what they're interested in um, and they just kind of basically submit a ticket to us we tell them what we need in order to integrate that and then we turn it on for them you know um, and that has actually been a really great tool to get other libraries interested in doing those things when i can say hey you have you know libcal right this library is using LibCal. Take a look at their ca uh, their catalog if you want to see how that you know looks on a live site. So that's been really nice. <laughs> Thanks so much. Uh, next question or anything else from anyone to add on that one? Thanks for folks uh, in the chat. Uh, so have you seen any changes or in your metrics or your statistics since going live with uh, Aspen Discovery? And let's start with Lindsay on that one. Well, I just have to laugh because um, the most striking metric that I noticed um, was our access to our synthetics content. Uh, so we have used synthetics unbound um, for our covers and um, added content about titles and things. And um, how their statistics uh, come out, you have, you know, these little graphs. And so it had been pretty steady for a long time. And then as soon as we started going live with Aspen, it just like whoosh, took off. And I actually downloaded these things and double checked to make sure that um, it was accurate, accurate because it looked weird. But um, use of our synthetics content um, exponentially increased um so all of the you know all of that extra information content uh was pretty huge um we haven't yet gotten to the point of comparing a lot of our analytics for um say like overdrive um but uh, i would suspect that that has also also gone up 
Thanks, uh, Sierra. Yeah, um, so I can't speak to overdrive statistics. I maybe should have looked at that before this. That would be a good thing to check because I would be curious to see. Um, but we, I think the thing with Aspen is that we get more statistics um, related to the catalog than we could get with the Evergreen catalog. Um, things like the number of searches that were um, uh, searched on on a catalog in particular um, i just had a library reach out and ask for that and you know we didn't previously have that information with the evergreen catalog and so being able to you know get that more i don't want to say granular but you know that more necessarily um, have before has been a good thing so i think we've seen an increase but i don't want to call that an increase in statistics it's just that now we have more stats that we didn't necessarily have before so we can actually start to track that data and see if there are changes and things like that thanks and linda we have seen an increase in our uh, ebook usage which was very difficult to find in the past, and I just dropped a link to a slide that shows that, um, especially our EBSCO ebook uh, content, we probably can't attribute all of this to using Aspen because as a college, we've kind of been gradually building up our acceptance and use of, of the e-resources, but the findability of having them show up in the catalog right along with books in a search and having having that button be right there and you can click through to it and it's very easy to get to um, so our statistics for ebooks have gone up dramatically even though if you look at the sheer numbers they're not very high yet but if you look at the percentage increases they're they're amazing year over year that's great um anyone else have anything to add on metrics or statistics okay um, so uh, you heard a couple of our folks are consortium managers. Uh, so we want to know how is it managing Aspen as a consortium? And then specifically, because this really varies by consortium, is what do you do versus what do your uh, members have permission to do? Uh, and let's go ahead and start with uh, Westchester. Uh, so Allison and I both kind of do different parts of things. So I focus a lot more on the sort of general integration with the ILS and uh, probably the, you know, those more back end sort of things. Um, we did have a little bit of angst in the beginning when we were first looking at Aspen over the idea of having individual instances for our libraries. We, we, we had a little bit of pushback on that one, but I think now we're really coming to realize that um, it works out actually really, really well for us. Um, so most of the configuration that we do is you know, set system wide. And personally, as like an administrator, I really like um, the amount of control that we have and that by extension, our libraries have in order to um, really change kind of like day-to-day -day things. Like I just had a bit of a go around with, you know, a library that was temporarily closing for um, renovations. So it was, you know, a really pretty simple matter to get it straightened out on, you know, the configuration end, and then they were able to add, you know, like their own system messages and things like that. Um, so I really like having that amount of control. I may be a little bit of a control freak, so I like that. Um, Allison can certainly speak more towards what the libraries themselves can do. Right. So of our 38 library locations, I think about only seven opted into not have not maintaining their own instance. And in those cases, I maintain them for them. So how we handled it is we uh, asked for one to two library staff that are trained in how to use uh, the administration menu the, in Aspen. 
And we have modified it so that their admin options are limited compared to what Lindsay and I deal with every day. But they have control over the theme of their instance, meaning that they can change the color and the branding. Um, they can change their browse categories, which is the uh, book displays on the front page of their instance. They can add system messages to communicate things like library closures or um, programs that are happening. They can add placards to their search results, which are tile-like ads that can uh, pop up in search results list depending on the keywords entered in the search. Um, and they also can add their links, their e-resources, they can build custom or basic web pages. So they have, a, they have quite a bit of control over how they want their instance to uh, look and to act. And then Lindsay and I take, kind of take care of uh, the more serious things so they don't have to worry about it. And, I, and a lot of our staff were really pleased to find out a, a lot of them were overwhelmed because they didn't want to take on more work. They don't have time in their day to add another thing to be responsible for. But I think once they saw just how easy it is to maintain and how intuitive everything is, a lot of that anxiety was kind of washed away because it is very intuitive once you just know where to click and look for things. Great. Thanks, Westchester. Um, how about Sierra? Yeah, um, so like I said in my introduction, um, I'm the Aspen person at CW Mars. Um, my position was created when they decided to implement Aspen. Um, so that is my whole job. <laughs> um, and basically, um, since we just recently launched in March, previously that was focused more on learning Aspen myself so that I could answer questions and support libraries now that we're live. Um, and also like kind of um, coordinating that implementation as well as the training sessions that we did for our libraries. Um, now that we are live, that's transitioning into, you know, supporting our libraries and helping them do, you know, edits to their themes and things like that, um, answering questions about how Aspen works versus the Evergreen OPAC, um, as well as uh, working to add any new libraries that we have joining the consortium. Um, so we decided to kind of lock down a lot of things. Um, we do let our libraries, um, they can edit their theme. They can't edit the layout. We wanted to have all of the libraries within the network kind of have a consistent search um, or layout for their catalogs. Um, so we have just one layout setting that's applied to every library in our consortium, but they do have the flexibility to edit their theme. Um, they can adjust their colors, their logos. They can add CSS to, you know, do some fun stuff. Um, some of our libraries have really um, done a lot and we have libraries that have also like not touched it at all. So we kind of have a wide variety um, happening with our catalogs. Um, our libraries can make custom um, and basic web pages and we have I believe two of our libraries currently using it as their website and we have several more working on, um, you know, creating the pages and everything so that they can use Aspen as their website. Um, and I think that's been a really great resource, especially for our smaller libraries who maybe don't have the resources to, you know, pay to host their own website and they just have, you know, at best, like maybe a page on the town website or probably like a Facebook page, right? Um, so having Aspen um, has been an opportunity for a lot of our libraries to kind of, you know, go in and customize and promote stuff to their patrons. I mean, it's been, like Allison said, I think it's really easy to learn. And so seeing our libraries kind of like jump in and, you know, go for it and right decide I like this I'm gonna set it up for my library like when we did the Aspen transition one of our libraries did that website transition at that time so they were you know all for it um and I think that's really a great thing the the flexibility that Aspen provides but at the same time 
we don't let our libraries do some of the more like um, Allison said the serious stuff <laughs> um, so things like uh, the cover images um, since we have so many member libraries we didn't want folks like fighting over what cover image shows up on the record and what shows up on the grouped work display um, so that is something that we handle at the network level and we've had folks submit tickets when there have been um, erroneous covers or things like that going on so we can fix that um, but that's something that we did limit as well as um, like uh, was previously mentioned the ability to like sideload all of those integrations that I talked about previously we have our library submit a ticket and I basically get the information from them and put it in Aspen and set it up for them um, so they do have some flexibility as far as I think like the fun stuff in Aspen, right? They can do their browse categories, they can make lists, they can change the colors and, you know, do all of that fun stuff. But that more, you know, the API connections, adding those other vendor integrations, um, merging different records and things like that, that is all handled at the network level, um, either by myself or like the cataloging center and some of my other colleagues who are in the audience today. Thanks so much, Sierra. Um, I also wanna point out if you have questions on side loading, um, we have some answers of what side loading is um, and then Porter County did a great, give you a little bit of you know how fast side loading is. So check out the chat if you're not following the chat. Uh, but on to the next question. Um, some of you may or may not know, uh, Aspen has a companion app that works off of Aspen's APIs. It's called Lita uh, that Porter County just went live on. And I know a couple of our other folks on the panel have taken a look at. Uh, so I'd like to start with Porter County on what their thoughts are on Lita since they're brand new Lita users. Hi, Jordan. Um, yeah, we are brand new this month um, with Lita. We are still sort of working into getting it more widely marketed. Um, so we have a soft, launch. a soft launch of it going on right now. Yeah, the staff have been using it um, for a few months now, probably since at least maybe January or February. Um, I really like it. We were previously using Communico's app. Um, we had some issues with it. It's the Lita app is so much faster and I really, really love because the Lita app is basically, it looks like a mobile version almost of the web browser version. Um, it's just, I feel like you can just pick it up a lot easier. Like you can just go from the web browser to the app. It has same functionality. Um, it's pretty easy. It's very friendly for the user. Uh, we found most staff were able to just pick it up, start using it, didn't need any kind of training on it. It was, it was really nice and clean. Um, I don't know who else, um, was it Allison was also going to speak on it? Um, we're investigating Lita right now. We are, um, we've had a demo with Jordan, um, and we have tested the, um, community version of it. And I, I am a fan of Lita. I think it makes the most sense to, when possible, use the same software for your catalog and your app because I think it just makes things a little bit more seamless. Um, and I think your search results should match wherever your patrons are using and searching. Um, there are some things uh, development wise that I would like to see going forward, but I just don't know if there's a timeline for those. Um, but I am a fan of it and I am interested to see like, uh, how, uh, how it grows. Thanks, Allison. Um, anyone else, any thoughts on Lita? All right. Oh, I, did, oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, I was just going to say, I, think I mentioned that we were using, um, the branded version. So we, we have our own instance of Lita that, um, we didn't go with the, the standard. <laughs> That's all. Yeah, and just to clarify that a little bit, we have um, a shared Aspen Lita that is branded just kind of like Aspen that all the libraries are in or whatever libraries want to be in it and you just kind of find your your library. Um, but then libraries also have the option to go with a library branded version where the patron, instead of looking up Lita, they look up the name of their library and um, download that specific library's app. And I think we have um, 11 libraries that are live using their own branded versions and then many, many, many in, in the shared catalog. 
Uh, okay. Uh, so the next question is, what's been your experience with the Aspen community? And I'm going to start off by saying we don't have a group for LIDA. So if you are interested in LIDA development and prioritizing those things, I'd offer anyone here um, the chance to start a group, which is something you can do in the Aspen community. Uh, but to talk about folks' experience, uh, let's go ahead and start with Westchester. Well, um, I... Oh, no, Lindsay, you go. Okay, I'm going to say <clears throat> it's kind of a joke um, amongst my coworkers that if there is an interest group, I will, you know, jump in there and at least, you know, follow along. Um, so there's uh, currently an evergreen uh, group, which is, which is great fun. Um, you know, we're still a little low key because there are not that very many of us yet. Um, but uh, I have to admit, I really like the... Uh, um, you know, like the, the development or the um, community releases, because the, so there's quite a lot of communication about what's going on, what new developments are happening. Um, so yeah, there's a whole lot of, of communication and very good documentation. And uh, I want to put a plug into Sierra, who's kind of, you know, uh, working on a Google Analytics specific sort of interest group with uh, a couple of other people, which is absolutely huge. So that's what I have to say. Um, to piggyback off Lindsay, um, yeah, the interest groups are wonderful. There is planned uh, meetings also just for like Aspen, uh, for all consortium using Aspen, um, but also the Aspen team itself is extremely responsive. Um, there are times where, you know, you need to submit a ticket and it's within minutes you get a response and everyone's always been very, very helpful. The documentation has been a true lifesaver as a trainer, trying to teach people how to use Aspen. Um, I'm been nothing but like very happy and impressed with just the community around it because everybody's just more than willing to like just share and I think that's really important for something uh, as open source as Aspen is. Thanks, Allison. Uh, how about Porter County? Um, I I just want to echo. I'm not really in the community as much um, in my role. I'm not I'm not working with Aspen as much as Elizabeth is. But from the beginning, when we looked at implementing this, Bywater has been a fantastic partner, and we we have really appreciated. Um, working with them and yeah that's just been it's helped make the experience great so I know that they're an important community partner and they've been wonderful mm -hmm. so. yeah I think during our implementation we're having weekly if not more often meetings mm -hmm. to get everything set up um, and I will say yeah I handle a lot of the tickets when something does happen to go wrong or if there's maybe a little bug um, and the responses I because I handled them from many vendors and um, by water, at least, has been probably the quickest <laughs> and most closely um, following. They they keep up with the tickets, which is great. It's there are some where it's like, did I even submit one? Did anyone respond to me? Um, and we also have the we have a um, Aspen for Evergreen users group that we do. Um, so we get to get together every other month. I think we're doing it to all just kind of chat and see what we want to see or what we can do better. What we'd like. Um, to kind of enhance. Uh, so it's been really great to just be able to get together with other people. I know I see Lindsay there a lot, <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's been really amazing. It's, I don't have that for almost anything else. I think that we, that we use, we don't have as much communication as we do with the, with the Aspen group. Thanks, how about Linda? So my use of the commu community, um, as I mentioned, I'm not a techie person. I don't code unless you count 1995 HTML as coding. Um, but I, so I'm, I looked when we were getting ready to do this, I looked at every Aspen site I could find. And I said, oh, look, they're doing this. They've got this menu button and, and all of this. And a lot of it was easy enough in Aspen that I could figure out how to do it. But then I would see really cool things. And Oh, how is that? And there's a way of adding CSS uh, easily into Aspen if you know how to write CSS. But the community sites have uh, have people have contributed 
their code for that CSS. So all I've had to do is copy and paste, which I can do. Um, and then in the cases where some of those, those customizations weren't available on the help pages in the documentation, then I, I reached out to people from the community and they were willing to share that those customizations and that code. So all I had to do is, you know, copy and paste the code that someone else had written and shared and, and it helped me to make our site look exactly uh, how I wanted it to look and feel and work. Thanks, Linda and Sierra. Yeah, um, I mean, I don't want to like echo too much of what has been said, but the documentation is great. Um, we're also, you know, hosted by Bywater and they've been great with support, the, you know, answering tickets and, you know, figuring out is this a bug or, you know, something that is more of like an enhancement thing, like is always really quickly um, responded to. Um, like, I think it was Elizabeth who had mentioned like some of those vendors, you know, you got to like hunt them down and be like, listen, y'all, can you just like give me an answer one way or the other? Um, and I've had a really positive experience in all of this, especially considering I had to like jump in and just learn this software so that I could then teach our libraries about it. Um, the documentation was really great. I don't think I would have been able to you know, get my footing nearly as quickly as I did without that documentation. Um, and those, all the various meetings that folks have, um, the Evergreen meeting is great, um, you know, plug. And as there are more Evergreen folks on Aspen, we can get more things, you know, for Evergreen in there. Um, that's kind of, I think, I feel like what has happened with us joining with Aspen, especially since we have Jason Stevenson on our staff, who's able to, you know, do all that fun development stuff um, that needs to happen um, we're able to you know have those priorities and get some features in that you know maybe weren't in there considering As or aspen works across so many different ils's right um i do also want to say that i really really love just like how friendly everyone is the slack channel um is great um it like Anytime I have a question or a library asks me a question and I have no idea, I'm just like, I don't know, I couldn't find it in documentation, let me ask in the Slack. And either someone, um, you know, another library who's on Aspen will answer or someone from Bywater will answer and, you know, link me to some documentation. And it's just really friendly. Um, you know, I've been able to get solutions to some of our issues um, from other consortium just by posting in the Slack in one of those various channels. Um, so I think, you know, similar to Evergreen, right, everyone's really friendly, it's all open source, like everyone, you know, is just trying to help each other out, and I think that's probably my favorite thing. Um, just, you know, like, I, I, I don't have any qualms about, like, I have no idea, let me ask, right, and I feel like with other things that I've worked with in the past, that wasn't always the case, right? I didn't necessarily have a place where I could go ask a question, and if I did, I didn't always feel comfortable to go and ask a question. Thanks, Sierra. Oh, Lindsay? I just wanted to put in another plug for um, the, the, the developers who are working in Evergreen and also Aspen to really um, improve those connections. Um, you know, because at least like when we started, there were some things that, you know, weren't quite there yet. Um, and that's been improving leaps and bounds. So, um, yeah all of the, the cooperation between, you know, a lot of the players and a lot of the people who do development is just, I mean, it's been really, truly amazing. And I do want to give a big shout out to Jason Stevenson, who like single-handedly like solved about four of our top library staff complaints in like one swoop. So that was, that was massive. Yay, Jason, thank you. Um, one more question. I'm going to ask our panelists to keep it brief, brief so we have time for audience questions. So if you are an audience person member and you have a question, now's your time to type it. Um, but what is your favorite feature of Aspen or what surprised you the most about Aspen? Uh, and let's start with Linda. We are moving to having this be our one stop shop. So instead of people having to go to Overdrive and to the different ebook vendors and to the catalog and to the website for different information, we are going to be able to make Aspen do it all. And we're really excited about that. Thanks, Elizabeth and Inga. 
I think um, one of our favorite features was the patron request feature. Um, we really love how integrated that is with the catalog and it just was a great solution for us being very patron driven. Um, and go ahead. For me, it's probably, I mean, there's so many. <laughs> I actually had to think about it because I was almost a browse categories, but I think grouped works um, was something we were really excited about. So you have like, you know, your book and you have every format of that book together. For one, it's a cleaner catalog um, mm -hmm. without having a bunch of duplicates, but also just the integrations with that, like having Novelist and Content Cafe and Syndentics. Syndentics. <laughs> I never say that word right. Um, to pull extra information because some of our records are a little on the weak side at times during some cataloging uh, row yes. points. <laughs> and so these like build it up. So even if our record is not great, Aspen's going to provide a lot more information. So it's a great discoverability. Thanks, Sierra. Well, if I have to pick like a favorite thing, I definitely want to say the community. Going to make that joke always because um, truly it's it's the best thing. But if we're talking about features in Aspen, I think the browse categories are a really great um, thing. I've been definitely promoting them to our different libraries as a low, if, low effort, high impact way to customize the catalog. Um, and that's gone over really well. Thanks, Lindsay. Um, I second group works. I love the group works so much um, where I'm kind of leaning towards the idea of and literally don't tell anybody who knows me directly. Um, do we still need to um, have shared bib records for multiple formats of books? So catalogers are like, why? Yes, you do need individual records. A lot of the rest of us are like, oh, but no. So anyway, grouped works and uh, the analytics and the potential for integrating things um, like pretty easily and with our own control, um, you know, Google Analytics and the integrated um, statistics that we can get. Thanks. And if you're not watching the chat, Linda, if you're not sure what these things are, Linda is popping all these examples in there. So check it out. Um, and then I'd like to finish with Allison. Um, I would like to second browse categories are one of my favorite features, but I'm also going to mention placards um, and just also the general ease of use using Aspen. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Um, let's see. Linda, I agree, is chat MVP. Uh, looking for questions in the chat. So please ask questions if you have them. Placards are wonderful. Again, placards are like you can put um, a search word in the search and you decide what it is ahead of time. So um, and then you get kind of like an ad. So if you search for knitting, maybe you get like a placard for creative bug. Uh, sounds weird, but I like finding out which catalog records need attention to properly display in Aspen. This is a common thing that we hear with implementing Aspen. Uh, it shows a lot of what's in your cataloging. So sometimes that means we can also hide a lot of what's in your cataloging. Um, so it, it's, it kind of goes both ways, but yes, um, it, it does show a lot of what's in the cataloging. I'm not seeing any questions. Does anyone have a separate kids page? Does anyone here have a separate kids page? Let's start with that. We do with an asterisk. Um, it's a consortial kids page. Um, that's something that we are in the process of discussing with our libraries, how they want to handle. Um, so I think it's just kids.cwmars. Um, Oh, I should have added uh, the things to turn that into an actual link. Hey, John, coming in clutch. Um, <laughs> so um, that is something that w uh, is controlled um, by like CWMR staff. So our libraries don't have access to it. Um, kids catalogs um, do work differently in the Aspen catalog versus at least how we handled them in the Evergreen catalog. Um, and so that has been a point of discussion um, for a few of our libraries. And actually we have started a consortial like Aspen interest group to kind of gather all of that discussion and uh, get folks in one room to talk about, you know, our instance of Aspen. And that's one of the things that we're going to be talking about next week. 
I did pop a link to some examples. Um, I think I got the link right of kids catalogs uh, from the Help Center. Um, so you can see it takes a little while to load because they're big images, but you can see different examples. And if you click on each of those, it will take you directly to that kids catalog. So yes, kids catalogs are scoped um, down to just only kids content. It can be per library, per consortium. And um, with the latest release of Aspen, we have the ability to scope all kids e-content with those APIs as well. Let's see, uh, other questions? I'm not seeing others. We're also a minute um, away, but um, you can contact any of us with questions or reach out in Slack for the Aspen community. If you need to be added to the Aspen community Slack, you can uh, email me. Uh, I'm putting my email in the chat right now. I just cannot chat and type at the same time. I'm jordan at bywatersolutions.com um, and we'll get you added to that Slack channel. Uh, and with that, I think it is right now at time. So thank you so much. And especially thank you to our panelists. Thank you to our attendees. And have a wonderful rest of your conference and Hackfest tomorrow. And I, as you know, the official moderator, not just the uh, panel moderator, uh, would like to uh, thank all of the speakers for a great session. Uh, thank you to everyone for attending this session and the conference as a whole, because this is it. Uh, th so there's no more next sessions, uh, but don't forget to sign up for tomorrow's Hackfest if you haven't already. And I will add the links for that in the chat. Well, I personally find it very exciting that we closed out the conference. So. Yeah. <laughs> right, got to save the best for last. <laughs> Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Jordan. Oh, Thank, you both. Thank you for all coming. <laughs> Thank you all, you know, fellow presenters. And uh, yes, thank you for putting some examples in the uh, chat. The, the image ones didn't transfer over very well to uh, feed loop. So sorry about that <laughs> to those who are on feed loop. Hopefully, you'll be able to see it in the recording. And uh, yeah, that's it. I mean, we can chat for a few minutes if we'd like, but uh, otherwise, have a good rest of your day, evening, morning, I guess, if you're in Australia or afternoon. I don't know what it is there, but you know, if you're in Australia, welcome. Well, if that is all, then I think I am going to end the session and officially end the conference, at least on track two. They might still be going on track one if you want to see. Bye. Such power. See you next year. <laughs> Bye, everyone.